What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods coming back at y'all with another two-minute drill. We're kicking off April, the week with April 26th, Monday. We got a busy week this week, man. We got three Big 12 and 30 days dropping this week to wrap off our month. We covered all the schools in the Big 12, man. Shout out to everyone who gave us 30 minutes of their time. I still can't believe we have people like y'all coming on the show to talk with us. So thank y'all so much. We also have an entire first-round NFL draft live stream, guys. We did it last year. We put in four hours and 41 minutes last year, man. We're back again. Pick one to pick 32. It's going to be right here on YouTube, Twitch, Periscope, and Facebook. So wherever y'all like to listen, make sure to follow us. Turn those post notifications on. That way y'all get all the updates. Plus, we got five two-minute drills this week like always man monday through friday right here on the youtube channel and guys like brandon said we're at like one almost 140 now for subscribers on youtube if we hit 200 before the first round of the nfl draft on thursday night we're picking five more of y'all to get that merch bundle giveaway we already got five of y'all picked from hitting 100 if we hit 200 we're gonna go ahead add five more to that and go ahead and send out 10 packages and we're gonna announce them all before the draft on Thursday. So make sure to plug the channel, man. We appreciate all y'all's support. But as I've wasted enough of y'all's time plugging at the beginning, let's get into it. We're back with our SWAC HBCU covered, man. And last week we covered, we covered the huge announcement. Dawson Odom's taking the job in Norfolk State, resigning from his Southern head coaching job, opening up probably a top five job in the, in the FCS. I mean, this job is a great job to have. It's It's got the recruiting background right there in the heart of Louisiana. It's got the history. It's got the talent. I mean, Brandon, this is a team that went 5-1 and one this year, and their only loss coming to Arkansas Pine Bluff, who is about to play in the SWAC championship this upcoming weekend. So a very, very talented team. They're not set to lose a lot of people going into the fall season. But there's been a lot of rumors. So, Brandon, you know, before we get into, you know, the probably the realistic candidates, there was a rumor. I don't know if you've heard this. Last week, that Connell Maynard was down in Louisiana interviewing for this job. Now, all script and uh, Cut Day Sports on YouTube has come out and said that this report is false. But there's a lot of people saying it's true. I've read a lot of reports that he's using it as leverage to get a new contract from Alabama A&M. Brandon, what do you think about these rumors? And do you think Maynard should even consider leaving Alabama A&M for Southern? Nah, I mean, yeah, the Southern job is cool. I, I mean, I, I think it's a very highly um, respected position. I think that there's going to be a lot of guys or a lot of a lot of uh, coaches going for this role. I don't think he. I don't think he actually did. I don't think he stepped a foot in Baton Rouge. I think that he is using this for leverage. Um, he likes where he's at. I believe. Um, you know, he's got a pretty nice situation right now. He's got to kill glass coming back next year. Why would you leave that? I, I mean, I, I don't. Personally, I wouldn't. Um, I understand, you know, using things as leverage, but just straight up lying for leverage is kind of weird, right? Yeah, I mean, li- I mean, we see Power Five coaches doing it, so it, it is a common thing happening. But I don't. If I'm Alabama and i I'm looking at him like, I mean, it's like it's like telling your girlfriend like you're gonna leave her for like kind of an uglier chick. Like it's like I'm gonna make a side. I'm gonna make a side step here and just really not even upgrade technically. I mean, listen, I know the Southern fans who listen are gonna say, "Hey, we're an upgrade from Alabama a And Yeah, you might be historically, but man, as long as Akil Glass is lining up at QB for Alabama a And M, I just I don't want to hear it. I agree. Southern is a very good team. It's a very good job, but. Man, for me, Brandon, the biggest thing for me with Maynard is you just talked all this crap to Deion Sanders about how you got four stars, you got them dogs, you got five stars, and that you're going to see them next year, and now you're about to dip dip out the back door to another program. I mean, yes, I mean, I get Southern place Jackson State too, but if you got them dogs at Alabama A&M and you make that type of comment and you're going to put your name on it, you got your signature on it and everything, you got your fingerprints all over it, and now you're going to dip, I just – it kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit right now. I'm not going to lie to you. No, I mean, that, that, I can't say what I want to say on, on that topic. I know we've been hit with the explicit tag in the last couple episodes, but <laughs> don't do not do that, man. Don't don't come talking that, that stuff and, and then just – I mean, like you said, just don't dip right after you say that. Like, 
like kind of man up, stay where you're at. I mean, I think you got a great team behind you. I will not stand for the Southern slander, Zach. So we're, let's, let's nip that in the butt. <laughs> Southern, let, let, let's rep Southern on this podcast, man. But Alabama a and great gig. Uh, like I said before, I can't see him leaving, especially in the situation he's in. Right. And so, you know, I'm glad we have you on this podcast, man. Got the LSU hat on. It's so appropriate because apparently – so I have a candidate I really like that comes from Lu- that comes from Louisiana too, but he's not on the LSU coaching staff. But we'll get to him second. But the top candidate, according to all reports coming out of Southern, is that LSU assistant coach Mickey Joseph is the top candidate. He is supposedly already interviewed for the job. Might have another interview coming up. Brandon, as an LSU fan, one I want you to start with this. How big of a loss would this be for LSU if he took the job? And do you think he would be actually interested? It'd be it'd be a giant loss for LSU. I mean, he's the wide receivers coach. Think about the wide receiver rooms that he's had since he's been at LSU. I mean, he he coached uh, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Terrence Marshall Jr., Keishon Butte. I mean, this dude has, has made – I mean, Justin Jefferson came in as a two-star. Came in as a two-star – he got drafted in the first round of last year's draft, Zach. I mean, he developed this kid. I'm not saying it was him alone, but he really helped to develop this kid. A lot of people, myself included, thought that whenever LSU fired um, fired the passing game coordinator um, and the offensive coordinator retired, they were going to hire uh, Mickey Joseph to take one of these positions. I mean, at very least, passing game coordinator. He played quarterback in college. He's a wide receivers coach. I mean, geez, you'd think that – he would have at least gotten a shot. It doesn't seem like he did at all. Uh, I mean, they went straight to the NFL. They went straight to let's chase Jake Peets um, because he coaches with Joe Brady. I know that he came from LSU. I get it. But it's kind of a slap in the face of Mickey Joseph, I think. And I think that's one of the main reasons I could definitely see Mickey Joseph taking this job. I mean, it's uh, it, if you're moving from a wide receiver coach to – a head coach, but and you're staying in college football, it doesn't really matter if you're going from Division One to One Double A. You're becoming a head coach, and I mean, you have to take these steps. I could, I mean, I don't think this is a downgrade at all for Mickey Joseph. I think he would see this as, as a definite upgrade. Um, he'd get to, he wouldn't have to move. Is another thing. Like he could, he could literally stay right in his house right now. He's from Louisiana. He's from Marrero. Um, I mean, I don't see a negative. He's already coached uh, at, at HBCUs in the past. I mean, he coached at Grambling and he coached at Alcorn State. And Zach, you said he coached at one other. Um, I, I'm, yeah. I'm on it. Oh, yeah. He coached at Alabama State in 2000 before he moved on to Nickel State. And so, I mean, he's got this background. I could, I don't know. I don't think it's that unrealistic. I mean, I know a lot of people are sitting over here talking about, oh, Mickey Joseph's never going to leave LSU. I don't know if that's the case, man. I really don't. Yeah, and you also I, – I, I don't know if people know this. He's also the assistant head coach for LSU right now, too. He was just promoted to that role, I believe, last year, if I'm not mistaken. He wasn't when he first got there, but just moved. And he also was the assistant head coach, I believe, when he was at Gramble, at, at Alcorn State. That's right. Alcorn State, he was also the assistant head coach. So he has so much experience, Brandon. And I think for me, the biggest thing he brings to Southern is the ability to tap into that Louisiana pipeline. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look them up, if, if you look up and kind of look into who was the lead recruiter for some of these wide receivers, Brandon, he was a, one of the lead recruiters for Terrence Marshall, yep. one of the lead recruiters for Keyshawn Boutte, John Emery, uh, Brian Thomas Jr., Jamar Chase, Devontae Lee, I mean, Savian Jones. This guy has recruited the best of the best. He also was a lead recruiter for TJ Finley, regardless of what happens to him. So yep. he has all these connections all throughout the state, I think Southern, if I'm the AD, if I'm on the hiring committee, I get that they want someone with head coach experience. I get that. Apparently, that was one of their top things, which kind of we're going to cover a topic at the end of this that kind of counts someone out for this. But for me, I think the number one thing I'd be like, listen, he has to be able to recruit the state of Louisiana. I don't think, Brandon, they're going to get anybody better than unless they went and got Coach O to take the job that can recruit the state of Louisiana better than Mickey Joseph. Zach, let me say this. I mean, he, 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 like I said, he's from Marrero. That's New Orleans, basically. I mean, he's from right outside of New Orleans. 
think about how much talent comes from the New Orleans area, and not only at LSU, but I mean, I'm talking about kids who play all over the country. I mean, you got you got uh, guys like Jamar Chase is from New Orleans. You got Leonard Fournette from New Orleans. You got Jalen Collins from New Orleans. I mean, you got all kind of people coming from New Orleans, and, and so. I don't know, man. You, you, he could definitely use that to his advantage. I think a lot more kids in Louisiana, you know, who, who want to stay at home. Um, instead, of, I, I, I could honestly see him making a big impact on recruiting, taking away from LSU and, and bringing players into Southern. Yeah, and you know, someone listening might be like, "Well, why is recruiting the biggest thing?" Because Dion's going to recruit at Jackson State. You're going to have to be able to keep up with those recruits. And, Brandon, if TJ Finley enters the transfer portal, you don't think you don't think Mickey Joseph's going to have the inside line yeah. on getting TJ Finley to come to Southern? He will. And my, I'm sorry, but one second. I said Jalen Collins. I, I meant Landon Collins. I don't know why. I blanked right there. I, I need to yeah. refresh. And I, I believe Joseph was the lead recruiter on Devontae Smith, too, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's, from, uh, he's not from New Orleans, but he's from Louisiana. Yeah, he's from. I, I know he usually kind of sticks to that pipeline, but man, I'm so excited for this, you know, to play out. And Brandon, I wanted to mention another candidate that I really like. As you know, we've went way over on this, but it's an exciting job. I like J- Jabbar Jaluk, out of Louisiana Lafayette running backs coach. I, he's also the assistant head coach at Louisiana Lafayette too. He was named as someone who could possibly take the job. He also, Brandon, did coach at LSU as well, and was the 2019 Running Backs Coach of the Year. And, Brandon, we've been real vocal in Louisiana Lafayette's rushing game with uh, Trey Regas, with um, um, Blake Elijah Mitchell. This guy can recruit Louisiana as well. This guy is under one of – probably, uh, Brandon, I think I would say is one of the most promising coaches in the country at Louisiana Lafayette. I mean, I, I think he could be in line for that head job if, you know, the head coach eventually steps out, which we thought he was this year. He was rumored to be with a lot of – uh, different jobs this year, but I mean, do you think Jalute could also be a really nice option for um, Southern? Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not going to say I would take him over Mickey Joseph, but yeah. if there is any truth, and, and look, I'm not like an analyst. I'm not. I guess I am an analyst, but I'm not like I'm not upper level. I don't know things. I, this is just me. This is my opinion. This is what I think. If there is any truth to him not wanting to take this job, I mean, he's got a pretty. He's got a pretty good at LSU right now. I think. Um, I wouldn't be mad at that hire either at all, man. I, I mean, I think you got to stick though. Uh, I know there's been speculation about about the um, about uh, Ray Lewis and, um, and and others wanting this job. I think you got to stick with somebody from Louisiana. To be completely honest with you, man, you got to you got to start recruiting the state because for so long, and this is coming from an LSU fan, for so long LSU has just ran this state because who's competing with them? I understand yeah. Southern doesn't play LSU in football. But um, you could definitely compete with them on the recruiting trail. You absolutely could if you get the right guy in there. Yeah. And the, I was blanking on the guy's name, Billy Napier, is the head coach of Louisiana Lafayette. I was zoned out on that one. I was like, man, what is his name? Like, even interview, he was interviewed for Auburn. But, man, I mean, you look at you look at Jaluk, though, Brandon. He was the coach of Fournette and Darius Geis at LSU, both outstanding athletes while they were while they were with the Tigers. <laughs> I mean, okay, more Fournette, but you know, guys is also on the outs right now for some other they, reasons. They, but, they cut ties, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they cut ties. But also, the reason, Brandon, that I also look at Jaluk is that he also was a standout Southern safety in the early '90s and was on the '93 uh, black a uh, black football championship team that they had there. So, I think he has the Southern ties. I think the fans would be ecstatic to have him. And so look out for Jaluk, look out for Joseph. But my final one, Brandon, as we've went almost 15 minutes on this topic, but it was like supposed to be like five. But um, we had a comment on a video where we talked about this resigning um, and this job becoming open. Someone commented uh, that Ed Reed should be a candidate. What what would be your take on Ed Reed, which would be interesting because supposedly Southern wants someone with head coaching experience. Do you think Ed Reed could be an honest – I could be a real possibility here? Or Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis was also a name associated with it. I, I will say I could see Ed Reed. Like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm going to stick to what I was saying before. You want to go with the guy from Louisiana. 
Ed Reed's from Louisiana. He played at Miami, sure, but he he's from St. Rose. Uh, he I think he I think he grew up in Destrehan. That's outside of New Orleans too. Um, yeah, I, I mean I I think you couldn't go wrong there, if, especially if you want to if you just want to piss some guys off, like we talked about in the la- last <laughs> week, and and just go with the trend or whatever it is. Uh, Ed Reed would definitely be a great hire. Ray Lewis too, but I, well. I don't even know if being from Louisiana would affect that. You're going to go play for freaking Ray Lewis. So that's, that's well, pretty cool. Also, the thing to note is that, you know, Ed Reed's getting some experience. I believe he's the director of player personnel now at Miami yeah. uh, for a year. And the comment, I found it. Um, Andre Barnes, I appreciate the support, my guy. I wanted to give you a shout out on the podcast. But he said that Ed Reed, with, a, with Mike Singletary taking the role that Jeff Fisher took at Tennessee State. Now, listen. <laughs> that would be fire. I ain't gonna lie. That that kind of gets my gets that gets my stomach and a little bit of butterflies. If they can pull that off, man, we're looking at a we're looking at the sweat next year with Alabama State and and you know what they got coming back with Maynard. You got Jackson State and what they're bringing back with Dion, and then you get Ed Reed and Mike Singletary taking this talent to Southern team in. Come on, my guy. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> that's true. He's the chief of staff with Miami right now. That's, yeah. I, I mean, obviously a head coaching position would be a step up from that. So if, if I think this is more of a if Ed Reed wants it sort of thing, you know, you gotta, you gotta take that into consideration too. Yeah. So guys, we'll keep all updated on the Southern job, man. We get, we just get so worked up about this, man. Speculating, and you know, we had a lot of ties on this one. Brandon has a lot of ties. He's He's in Baton Rouge right now, so not only is he representing Southern, he's also representing LSU, and he's a closet. Well, not really even a closet. He's a Louisiana Lafayette fan as well. So we had just a Brandon segment today, so I had to make sure to get my my guy's opinion. But let's move on to a team Brandon's real, even probably more high on than his own. That's the Texas Longhorns. They had their spring game this uh, this past Saturday, and it was it was a Really interesting game where everyone's more focused on the quarterback battle, what Steve Sarkeesian is going to bring to the offense. So, Brandon, what did you take from this weekend, if anything, from the Longhorn spring game? <laughs> That's a pretty good – I like that you added that on, Zach, because there was, I don't think there's a lot to take away from it. It was not very memorable. Uh, you know, I, I watched part of it. I wasn't blown away. Uh, I didn't really expect to be – and this – okay, I don't want this – segment to just be Texas slander, you know, on a normal day, I normally would, but I've grown guys since the last time we talked Texas football, I've grown. Um, <laughs> say something nice about Texas, but John Robinson looked really good. That's, that's the only good thing I can say about Texas. Yeah. I'm, listen, guys, I'm, I'm going to say this, you know, uh, Barice Hall is going to be a problem in the big 12, but John Robinson is going to be on his heels. In terms of running backs to look out for him, Deuce Fine, um, and I think even Zachary Evans is someone to watch out for at TCU next year at the running back position. But right now, Bajan Robinson is easily the second best running back in the Big Twelve. He averaged over five yards a carry, had a had a touchdown where he made their starting linebacker look like a fool on the field. Man, I mean, took this dude's soul. With with, with with the he just made him look dumb. It was I think it was the linebacker schooler, if I'm not mistaken, on that touchdown. But outside of Bajan, though, man. So Casey Thompson ran with the orange, and Card Hudson ran with the white team. So those are kind of the two guys going for the starting quarterback position. And Brandon uh, Thompson went 23 for 42 for 242. Uh, Hudson Card 191 was 16 for 20 and had a touchdown. Both were sacked over three times, Card being sacked five. Did either quarterback stand out for you or kind of solidify that they should be QB1 moving into 2021? No. I mean, obviously, <laughs> they didn't. I mean, I don't know. Texas has kind of fallen on this thing where they can't find – ever since – I mean, Sam Ellinger was like a blip on the radar in Texas quarterbacks ever since, you know, Colt McCoy, I guess. I mean, na- name one besides that, Zach. I can't. <laughs> um, I, 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 you got me there. Yeah. So, like, I, I think we're kind of heading back to that. You know, it, it is disappointing, I'll say, because I think football legitimately is better when Texas is good. I think football is better when USC is good. I think Texas is good when the Blue Bloods are good. So, or the football is good when the Blue Bloods are good. Um, 
we're so, always good, by the way. Well, we are always good, but other than that, <laughs> it's like, like, but no, I mean, it's just disappointing to be completely honest with you, Zach. I mean, they made this head coaching change. Steve uh, Sarkeesian stepping into his first season as head coach at Texas. And, you know, as much as I hate Texas, as much as we joke around about the horns down or whatever, you want them to be good. And it's just so underwhelming and so disappointing when you watch the spring game and, and you saw what they had to bring. Because it didn't look good. I mean, I don't know. I think a lot of Texas fans out there, if you're watching this, we would love some feedback. I'd love to know where, you're, where your head's at. But if this were my team, I'd be severely disappointed with the way this spring game went. Yeah, and I mean, it was kind of like uh, – so I, I, the, the best comparison is my own team. It just kind of reminded me of the Auburn game where it was like, yeah, Tank Bigs people like a, like a monster. But did you, were you really impressed with anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Not really. I mean, so I think – let me say this. I do think Casey Thompson took a small lead for me, Brandon Koo. So, in the spring game, I really don't look for the stats or anything like that because they're playing on unequal playing fields. One's going against second team. One's going against first team and things like that. But for me, the offense flowed so much better with Casey Thompson than it did Hudson Carr. He just seemed to have a better overall grasp of what was needed to be done, how things should be done. So for me, uh, I think Casey Thompson's kind of took a small lead into this game in the first place, and I think he kind of bumped it up a little bit because it's just if if you're not going to be perfect, if you're not going to go win the national championship this year, the best way to go is just take the path of least resistance. Right now, I think Casey Thompson is that. I think he has a better grasp of the system, a better grasp on what Steve Sarkeesian wants to do, and so I just think things will go a little bit smoother for Casey Thompson than it would be for uh, Hudson Card. Yeah, I agree, man. I mean, I, I really, I, I'm really interested to see how this quarterback battle plays out because I, it's definitely still ongoing. It's not over by a long shot. I agree. And, you know, the final thing here I want to talk about, Brad, I want to get your take too. So going into last year, they had, I think they were ranked like 118th out of something like that in wide receiver uh, returning production. I don't. You can. I know. Listen, Kyle, Kyle, I think it was Kyle, Kyle Money or Mooney. I don't know how he pronounces it. It only has one O, so I'm assuming it's Money, but that'd be a weird way to spell Mooney. But aside, he looked really good. I, I think Marcus Washington has some potential, and Jordan Whittington looked decent. But there was really just no one that blew you know blew me away on the field. I still don't think they have that go to number one receiver that you're like, okay, I'm, it's third and nine. I So for LSU, when Jamar Chase on the field, you could throw it to Jamar Chase on third and nine and have him go make a play. Alabama, last year, Devontae Smith's down there somewhere. Throw it to him. See what he can do. Auburn, Seth Williams down there somewhere. We could throw it to Seth and make a play. They don't have that wide receiver that if you're telling me it's third and nine, they're like, Zach, pick us a guy to go to. I'd be like – hand it off to Bajal Robinson and hope for the best. I mean, I mean, I know that sounds harsh, Brandon, but I mean, if I said you got to put $50 on the line, Brandon, this 39, who are you throwing it to? You say, give it to Bajal Robinson and hope for the best, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, was there anyone that you saw this weekend that you were like, man, he could be a top big 12 wide receiver? No. And I think that contributes to the quarterback battle, man. I, I do. I think that if there was like one true, you know, wide receiver one or i mean even even someone who played is like a true like like good enough to be a wide receiver and it sounds awful but to be like a wide receiver two at a at a school that has a strong receiving core then yeah i think i think maybe we'd see a little bit of progress there in the qb bounty battle but i think it starts there man i think i think they have to find out what's going on with the wide receiver room work on that and then the quarterback battle can probably play out yeah, I agree. And they did get a four-star commitment or something like that. I forget the kid's name, but he should be coming in soon. I know they had another guy out with injury, but I don't know if they're going to be true number one targets. I think until the wide receiver situation, Brandon, is solved at Texas, I'm not confident that they're going to be able to compete for a Big 12 title. I'm still not confident in the defense. I think Casey Thompson will take snaps moving forward. I really think, listen, I know he's not a finished product, I think Malik Murphy coming in next year is going to be a serious problem at quarterback. I think that's their solution. 
I just don't know if they have a wide receiving solution right now for the Texas Longhorns. So it's something to watch. You know, Steve Sarkeesian had a great run at Alabama, but Brandon, I don't even know if they have someone comparable to John Mechie on this team. Well, John Mechie's really good. And that, exactly. But, I mean, but, but John Mechie was like the fifth option last year. That's true. And, and Texas fans, I seriously, I'm not, I'm not trying to get under your skin here. If you have, I mean, if you have any comments, if I missed something, let, let us know, man. We love the interaction, uh, and we'd love to be, you know, I guess we'd love to be uh, educated on this. So, so hit us up. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you saw in the spring game. Uh, maybe we'll bring it up again. Maybe we'll apologize. I'll eat my words. Hey, we already had an apology episode to Dion because he called us out for, you know, not us out, but called, you know, some similar content out for, you know, calling him out. But, guys, this was an awesome episode, man. We are back for the week. You know, on the weekends, I get I get a little upset. I look forward to recording these every day, and I'm like, man, we don't have a two minute drill. It's Saturday, <laughs> but but man, we we appreciate all y'all support, man. Listen, it's a big announcement. We are the podcast of the week for undrafted sports, so you can find us on the front page of the website. Now, listen. I know, you know, for the podcast of the week, we're supposed to be promoting ourselves, but I beg y'all to go check out Undrafted Sports. Find another podcast on there to go support. Go subscribe to them. Give them a five-star rating, man. I want to put on for our Undrafted Sports family, so make sure to go do that. We'll be posting the link on our Twitter and shouting out some of the other podcasts on the network this week. And That's how we're going to use our podcast of the week for Undrafted Sports, man. So shout out to all the other people on, on, on Undrafted Sports. Make sure to go check it out. And now for us, man, if you're here watching this video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. We cover everything going on in the world of college football. It might be the all season, but it's not the all season here on the Blue Bloods, man. Mon Monday through Friday, the two-minute drill drops. We're still doing our Big 12 in 30 days. You'll have three of those this week. Kicked off today by John Morris, our homie who's been on the podcast twice now, one of my favorite guests from Baylor. So make sure to check that out. We got some interesting comments on a rough season last year and how that could improve. And then later this week, Oklahoma State and West Virginia are represented on the podcast, man. We got some great guests lined up for that. But, guys, make sure to subscribe. As I said at the beginning, man, 200 Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central, man. If we hit 200, we're picking another five of y'all live on the podcast to give that merch bundle. We're going to contact y'all after that and make sure we get sizes lined up, addresses lined up, and we're going to get y'all y'all's merch ASAP for free, man. So make sure to do that. But we appreciate y'all support, man. Me and Brandy can't thank y'all enough. But for B-Dub, myself, and the Blue Bloods, guys, we are out.